ancient Jewish wedding customs and Jesus Christ and his bride. See the correlation between these customs and the rapture. Did you know that there is a distinct correlation between ancient Jewish wedding customs and practices to the coming of the Lord? There will even be a marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven which is similar to ancient custom also. If you are already aware of it, there still might be an avenue or two that you might find enlightening. Selection of the Bride in Ancient Times The Hebrew father of the groom would choose the son's bride. The son would honor his father's choice and the arrangement plans would begin. Jesus made it very clear that we did not choose him, but we were chosen. John 15 verse 16 You did not choose me, but I chose you and I placed you so that you would go and you would bear fruit and your fruit would remain, so that whatever you would ask the Father in my name he would do for you. The bride price or the mower it was considered that the husband and his family were gaining an asset and the bride's family were losing one. And the price was according to the wealth of the groom's father. The choice of whom the bride would be in the bride price or mower as it was called was to reflect the father of the groom's honor, integrity and stature. His future generations were at stake. Even if the bride's family was not wealthy, if the groom's father was, the price was to reflect his wealth. Considering the stature and wealth of the Heavenly Father, what would be a fitting price for the bride of Christ? Corinthians 6 verse 19 to 20 Or do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit in you, which you have from God, and you do not belong to yourselves? For you were bought with a price now. You must glorify God with your body. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 to 19 knowing that you have been redeemed not with corruptible things like silver or gold from futile living handed down from your fathers but by the precious blood of Messiah as of the unblemished spotless lamb the agreement or the betrothal the ketubah the wedding agreement was called a ketubah after the terms of the ketubah were accepted a cup of wine was shared to seal the marriage covenant. From the time forth, the couple was considered to be married, even though the marriage was not consummated yet. The bride resided with her family until the time of the wedding. Notice this Matthew 26, verse 27 to 28. Then having taken a cup, after he gave thanks, he gave the cup to them, saying, You must all drink from this. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out on behalf of many for forgiveness of sins. Luke 22, verse 20, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood which is being poured out on your behalf. This ketubah has two parts. Phase 1, here at the initial acceptance of the agreement. It is settled with the first cup of wine in phase 2, at the wedding, a second cup of wine. Notice how Jesus says to do the new covenant, communion, in remembrance of him. He is the groom going away, but he will return for his bride and bring her unto himself. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 25 to 26. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant by means of my blood. You must regularly do this as often as you would drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you would eat this bread and you would drink the cup, you were proclaiming publicly the death of the Lord until he would come. Mark 14 verse 24 to 25, And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is being poured out on behalf of many. Truly I say to you that never again am I drinking from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When we take this cup communion, we are remembering him. The price he paid with his body and his blood. But we should also stop and pause and rejoice that he will sup the wine again, only this time, with his bride. Taking communion in honor of him as he asked, but also with the intent of someday, being with and sharing the cup with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
bridal can send her commitment to bride did have the choice of refusal. If she disagreed with what was being presented to her, she could refuse the wine cup and the deal was off. If she drank from the cup of wine, the covenant was sealed. The only way out of it after this for either of them would be death or divorce. The engagement was as binding as being legally married. When we receive the Lord as Lord and Savior, we enter into a covenant relationship. We are betrothed to the Lord spiritually and we reject all other gods and idols and stay faithful to Him. We are like the bride of those days, in that we have all the legal rights of being betrothed, even though the marriage is not complete until the final ceremony. Having been bought with a price, the bride now keeps herself for him. While betrothed preparations for the future, the groom then begin to build the new home, usually on family property, for the couple. It was important that this new home would meet the honor of the father's stature as it would be the continuing of his family. Neither bride nor groom knew when the father would say it was good enough so they both needed to be ready. Jesus left to prepare a place for his bride. John 14 verse 2 to 3 In my father's house are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, would I tell you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I would go, then I shall prepare a place for you. I am coming again and I shall take you along with me, so that where I am you would also be. The mikveh when they felt they were getting close, the bride would go through the ritual of immersion, called a mikveh. It signified the passing of the old and the forthcoming of the new. The person has to be strictly clean and be completely immersed. Mikvah is the same word as baptism immersion. Call for the wedding when the father decided that all was in order, he would have his servants start putting together the things needed. Have the chauffeurs blown and send the word out that the wedding was about to happen. It was customary for one of the groom's party to go ahead of Thedred. Grum, leading the way to the bride's house and shout, Behold, the bride and groom comes. And father would say to his son, Go and get your bride. This would usually happen at night, and when the bride got the word, she would run to meet the groom, and together they would head for the ceremony. Matthew 24 verse 36 But no one knows about that day and hour, and neither do the angels of the heavens nor the Son, except the Father only. Mark 13 verse 32 But concerning that day and the hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven and not the Son, only the Father. I Thessalonians 4 verse 16 to 17 the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a command, with the voice of an archangel, and with a chauffeur of God, and the dead in Messiah will rise first, then we, the living. Those who are left behind, will be taken away together with them into the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And thus we will always be with the Lord. The Huppa, ceremony or celebration, there would be a short ceremony, and then the bride and the groom retired to the place he had prepared up a wedding chamber, and the friend of the groom, the best man, stood by the door. When the marriage had been consummated, the groom would shout in his joy and the friend of the groom would relay the good news to the guests. This was the beginning of a week-long celebration and the first week of the couple being alone together in the bridal chamber. John 3 verse 29 to 30 the one who is the bride is the bridegroom, and the friend of the bridegroom is the one who stands by. Then when he hears his joy, he rejoices because of the voice of the bride and groom. Therefore this joy has been fulfilled in me. It is necessary for that one to increase, and for me to decrease. The ceremonial second cup of wine or the simca, the second cup of wine was shared during the marriage ceremony with the bride drinking after the groom. Thus the ketubah has been completed.
the first cup of wine having been drank at the acceptance of the Kitabah Matthew 26 verse 29. And I say to you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink this with you anew in my Father's kingdom. The Marriage Supper After a week of time together and week of celebration, the couple officially emerges for the wedding feast. Revelation 19 verse 7 to 9 Let us rejoice and be glad, and we will give him the glory. Because the marriage festival of the Lamb has come and his wife has prepared herself and it was given to her that she would be clothed in brilliant, pure, fine linen. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Then he said to me, You must now write. Blessed are those who have been called to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Let's take a closer look at this parable. The Ten Betrothed begins Matthew 25 verse 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of the heavens will be like ten virgins, who, having taken their lamps, came out to meet the bride and the groom. And five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take olive oil with them. But the wise took olive oil in the containers with their own lamps. And when the bridegroom delayed, they all grew drowsy and they were sleeping. Then in the middle of the night there had come a cry, Behold the bridegroom, you must come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their own lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, You must now give us from your olive oil, because our lamps are going out. But the wise ones answered, saying, Then there would not be enough for us and for you. You must rather go to the sellers and buy oil for yourselves. And while they were gone to buy it, the bridegroom came. And the prepared ones entered the bridal chamber with him and the door was locked. And later the remaining virgins came, saying, Lord, Lord, you must open to us now. But he said, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore you must habitually be watchful, because you do not know the day or the hour. As betrothed virgins, they were supposed to be preparing for the wedding, sewing the various garments, purifying, learning, etc. in anticipation of the big day. But five grew drowsy and were sleeping. They were to keep a light in the window during all night time and have more oil on hand, to make the journey to meet the groom. Without a light in the night, how would they find their way to meet the groom? They would stumble and fall, get off the path. Being unable to navigate in the dark, they were to meet up with a groom and head for the wedding ceremony, honeymoon and marriage supper. Five of the betrothed made it. Five did not. All ten had the opportunity. Five had their heart in it and kept to their purpose. These stayed on course with well-supplied lamps, trimmed wicks and fresh oil on hand. This is how we must be as the betrothed church waiting for our Lord Christ Jesus. Only the prepared ones will make it. There will not be any second chances. Those arriving late will be locked outside the door. We must burn passionate for our Lord and be able to stay on course through the darkness and possibly very heavy darkness. The bridegroom is coming. As Eve was created from the first Adam, as so the bride of Christ is created from the second Adam, Jesus Christ. Genesis 2 verse 22 to 23 And he built the rib which the Lord God had taken from man into a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She will be called wife Isha, because she was taken out of husband Ish. In John, chapter 1, notice here the word take where as most versions say receive, John 1 verse 11 to 13. He came among his own people, but his own did not take him. And so many as did receive him, he gave them authority to become children of God, to those who believed in his name.
they are not from blood and not from the desire of flesh and not from the will of man, but were begotten from God. Take this word means to take as your betrothed, speaking of the intimate relationship Yeshua came to seal. The version of the Bible used for this particular study, the One New Man Bible, is one of the most literal translations there is. I think in many versions, these verses lose impact going from one language to another. The One New Man Bible shows in its commentary that Jesus did not come just to be lightly received. He came from the Father to bring us back to Him. To take Jesus, to receive Him, meant to believe in His name in a life-changing manner. It was an as entering into a covenant relationship with our holy God. Because he called us out, chose us. Note it says, he gave them authority to become children of God, not just became children of God. 